on this computer. Right, so good day, everybody. Welcome to our first Zoom lesson for CMIN 101. The last couple of les lectures we had on MS Teams, I figured let's introduce a new type of software, all right? A new application, and we can play around with Zoom, and we can always re revert to MS Teams. So we are busy on uh, C++ programming. C++ is a programming language and you get other types as well. Now you get JavaScript, you get SQL, Python, PHP. Um, I don't know what all those other ones are right now. All I'm interested in is C++. By the way, you can also go to this tutorial and you can access the C++ homepage. Let's go to the homepage and you can start revising our work. Now, the reason I am selecting resources that are on the internet is that so you can have access to this after our lecture is over. All I'm doing is I'm facilitating your learning. So we covered the introduction to C++. We covered what is C++ syntax. Syntax just simply means the way we write our code. We spoke about output, the C out statement. We spoke about comment statements. I introduced you to variables. And there were two very important variables that I spoke about. One was the int and the other one was the float. Right now they're talking about double. All right, so you can read up on this, read up on all of this and apply it to a program. Now, what's so nice about this website, if I'd like to run a program, it allows me to do that by simply clicking a run example. So here's the example, it says int my num equals 15. So my num is a variable name. Int means that it is an integer value. C out my num without my inverted commas, it displays 15. So I feel that's pretty cool. Now, in, on the lecture on Thursday, I introduced you to the if statement, the if else statement. In today's lecture, we'll continue with this. This is part of a conditional variable, a conditional statement, something that has a selection process that needs to take place, right? So I'm going to take the notes from the website. It says, C++ if else statements. Now in programming, you have assignment statements. For example, I will say num1 is equal to something like five. We have a condition that takes place where I'm using a logical condition to identify whether one variable is less than the other variable it's more than the other variable, or if it's equal to it. Now, in mathematics, if I had to state A is less than B, I can do the very same thing in C++ by assigning the values to A and B. Now, A and B would be variables. Can you see the word here? It says mathematics. Ah, I like that. It says mathematics, right? Mathematics. And it's very important that we as IT students have a strong mathematics background. Not essential, but it's nice to have, all right? Ah, I'm going all right, I'm going to mute everybody. I can see uh, someone's talking out there. Right. Uh, is there a question in the chat? Is there a question in the chat? No questions. Uh, participants. Oh, I've got 25 participants. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Right. 
Now, here's my C++ statement that I have. I have um, A is less than B. A is my variable. B is my variable. And I am making a decision, a decision that says A must be more than B. And let's take concrete examples. I'll take if A is equal to five and B is equal to six, then five is less than six, which is true. All my conditional statements, it will either be true or it would be false. So all of them have an idea of saying, listen here, this is true or this is false. Let's go on. In C++ programming, I will use this as a block of code. I like this word code. They talk about code as lines of text where it's written according to the syntax of the programming language. So here's my line of text. It says, if a particular condition is true, I must do something. So if I am hungry, I will eat in ordinary English. Here's the syntax that they talk about. If is in lowercase letters. So here's another example. If 20 is greater than 18, then see out, display it on the screen that 20 is indeed greater than 18. Now, this is very important in programming terms. In programming and in IT, we need to make a decision. Maybe one of you will be designing a robot one day. You've got to instruct the robot that if a particular condition is met, what must it do? So let's say, for instance, um, there's programming a motor car. If there's an obstruction in the front of the motor car, then it must stop. Here's my example with my test variable. So I'm, I'm basically setting you up, starting you up to one day become a programmer, a software developer, or a software designer, where you've got to make a decision. And you've got to program this, you've got to code this in the language that they will specify. For example, we are now using C++. C++ is simply the tool to enable you to get to grasp with IT concepts. So let's run the example. If I run the example, it says 20 is indeed greater than 18. Now, in the previous lecture, I introduced you to the online C++ editor. We'll do this in the online C++ editor. Let's try it out. So I'm gonna copy this text, control C. I'm going to open up my online editor. My online editor. Right, let's open up my online editor and I'm going to play around with what would happen if I change the values of A and B. Now, in my case, I'm using 20 and 18. So you should be able to see my online GDB compiler. And I will post this in our WhatsApp group. Okay, so I'm going to have a new, pro pro a new project. Click on create new project. And because I've signed in, it says, welcome Prinav and Governor. Isn't that so user-friendly, so welcoming? All right, so let's, let's, let's wait for it to uh, start a new project. And here's my new project. And I'm going to play around with what does this if statement do? I want to make a choice. By the way, when you are doing your Scratch project, which I'm going to start marking very soon, you would have had to make a choice. So here's my program. Let's just see if it runs. 
So include IO stream using namespace standard. If 20 is greater than 18, C out 20 is indeed greater than 18. Oh, uh, my language that I've selected was C++. Compiling, compiling, compiling the program. Yeah, 20 is in grade greater than 18. So let's now go and change this 20. It's just saying 20, I want to put in 50. I want to put in 50 and I want to see what happens. Is 50 greater than 20? So I'm going to change that out and I'm going to run the program. Compile, compile, compile. Hello, Charles Brown, I can see your video is on. Great, 50 is greater than 18. Yay, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to change it around. I'm going to put down 18 on this side. I'm going to put 18 there and I'm going to put 50 over here. But because I know that 18 is not greater than 50, I'm going to say 18 is less than 50. So let's compile, compile the program. Well, let's make it a bit beautiful. Beautify the program a little bit. Click on the beautify button. And then I'm going to run the program. Compiling, compiling, compiling. It says, mm, it doesn't say anything. 18 is greater than 50. No, it see, it's, it, it didn't say anything. It just left it blank. What happened there? So it went through line number 17 and it says, is 18 more than 50? No, 18 is not. So it actually ignores line 18, 19, and 20. And that's why it doesn't do anything for us. All right, it doesn't do anything. Now, if I wanted it to do something, that means I must ensure that statement number 17 is true. Okay, so let's go back to our if statement. Let's run another, let's try this exercise. Test yourself with exercises. Anybody would like to give me the answer for this? Print hello world if x is greater than y. So here they're telling me that int x is equal to 50, Int y is equal to 10. I'd like you to include the C++ statements so that I make that answer true. All right, I'm going to include that. I'm going to put that into our WhatsApp group. Here's my WhatsApp group. Let's see who can give me the answer. You can give me the answer on WhatsApp or you can unmute yourself and give me the answer right now. Oh, all right, so I'm gonna post that out here. And say, who can give me the answer? What's the answer right so let me let me see anybody anyone with an answer here anyone would like to unmute themselves who would like to say something sianda your mic is unmuted go ahead chat anybody with an answer So let me try this now. Here it is. If x is greater than y, see out hello world. Let me submit the answer. Yay, what is that? What is that? Print hello world if x is greater than y. Let me show the, see the answer. Yay, that's the answer. All right, there we go. Let's go, let's go the queer answer. And I'm gonna post this in our WhatsApp group. 
Right, so there's the answer. Anyone with an answer? The answer. All right, let's do another exercise. Let's do another exercise. I'm going to try this out and it says, and I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. My, my internet seems to be a little slow. It says, I run the following example. Int time is equal to 20. This time we're using a variable. If 20 is less than 18, I must display the words good day. Otherwise, I must display good evening. So let me run the example. If I run the example, aha. So now time is equal to 20 and it says, is time less than 18? No, so it says good evening. Let's copy this and paste it in our online compiler. I blocked it, I said copy or control C. I go to my online compiler. I'm going to delete my previous program. Ah, there we go, I've, I've now pasted in my new program. And I want to test to see what happens with this program. Let's run this program, compile, 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 run the program. So let's run the program, run, 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 compile, 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 compile. Now it says, good evening. So time is equal to 20 in line number 17. It's a variable called time. And the type of variable is an integer. In line number 18, there's the conditional statement that I've been talking to you about. Time is less than 18. Now you must take 20 and you must place it in the variable time in line number 18. And ask yourself the question, is 20 less than 18? If that statement is true, then I must go to line number 19, 20, 21. Look at my curly brackets in line number 19. This means I am starting a block of code. This means in line number 21, I'm ending my block of code. Now, because 20 is not less than 18, the words I'm looking for is not less than 18. It ignores line 19, 20, 21, and it goes to line number 22. And in line number 22, it says, open my curly brackets in line 23 and display good evening. So basically, I'm saying that 20 is representing eight o'clock. And anything be before 1800 hours, which is six o'clock, I must say good day. I could have also made it good morning and good day. So now I'm gonna change 20 and I'm gonna say, if time is equal to 13, which is 1300 hours, and if time, is less than, mm, let's say 12. I must print out good morning. Otherwise I must state good day. So let's run this program. Run the program, run the program, run the program, compiling, compiling, compiling. Now it says good day. So it basically says, I am having the value of 13. 13 is not less than 12 in line number 18. It jumps over to line number 24. If I had to change 13 to let's say 10 o'clock in the morning, and if I run the program, compiling, 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 it now displays good morning. So, in line number 17, it assigned the value of 10 to the variable called time. Remember last week's lecture, I spoke to you about having a story sum. Once upon a time, there were three bears. That's Goldilocks and the three bears. Now I'm talking about once upon a time, there was a variable called time and the variable was an integer. 
this variable store the value of 10. In line number 18, the variable 10 was compared to 12. Here's my conditional statement. If 10 was less than 12, I would now have to execute line number 20. If 10 wasn't less than 12, I would have had to execute executed line number 24. Okay. All right. I, I'm actually missing you, missing to see who you are, what you are, what you're saying, all of that. And I can't even see your chat as well. Where's the chat? Anybody with the chat? Anybody wants to say something? Unmute yourself. I'm going to now allow you to allow your participants to unmute. So what if the numbers were equal? Very good question. I like this question. Thank you for this question. So let's try it out. So now I am going to say the time, T time is 10. What if T time, uh, let's say this was 10 out there, right? So it now says if T time is equal to 10, let's run the program. Compiling, compiling, compiling. Compiling, compile. Oh, it says good day. That means it went and this checked the condition in line number 18. T time, which is 10, is not less than 10 because 10 is equal to 10. So it went and ignored line 19, 20, 21, and it went straight on to line 22, 23, 24, 25. If I wanted to include 10 in there, then I must state less than or equal to. Now let me run the program. Compiling, 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 compiling. And it says, good morning. So now it executed. 10 is indeed equal to 10. And it must run the lines 19, 20, 21. And it said, good morning. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Excellent, excellent. Let's take a screenshot of this and post it in our WhatsApp group. All right, so there's my WhatsApp. So what happens in conditions is something can either be less than, something can either be equal to, or something can be less than and equal to, or it can also be greater than or equal to. If you read the no notes above the if statement, my condition statement, there we go. There's an equal to, and it can also be not equal to the other number. Okay. So let's go to this else statement. Now. Let's read up what the else statement, what we did there. In the else statement, the else statement is used to specify a block of code if the condition is false. So if something is true, it runs it. The else statement will say if something is false. Now we also have another statement called the else if, meaning I can now go and decide on more than one condition. In this example, let's run the example first. Click on run the example. Time was equal to 22. If time was less than 10, see out good morning. Now, 22 is not less than 10. So it's not going to execute that line. Else, if time is less than 20, 22 is not less than 20. It's not going to run that line. It goes to the last statement and says, see out good evening. So it looked at the two conditions. Time is less than 10. Time is less than 20. None of those conditions were true. It went and displayed C out good evening. So let's put this in our compiler and let's play around with it. So this is how I want you to work with programming code. All right, I've given you the options of an online editor. It's unfortunate that I can't see you and I don't know where you are, but we're doing the best that we can under the circumstances. All right, so now, I'm displaying my new set of code. Let's go and uh, test it. So 
So there was a, there was, or someone asked me a question, what happens if it's equal to? Now I'm giving you options of running the program and working out what happens if there's more conditions that I'd like to uh, execute, All right? So in my case, uh, I like using the online compiler because I have line numbers as references out here. All right, let's see if it can make it prettier. Yeah, that's how I like it. I like it pretty like this. So when I say pretty or beautify the code, I'm indenting the code, I'm making it easy to read. So in line number 17, it says time is equal to 22. That's an assignment statement, the variable. It now makes a condition. Is 22 less than 10, which is not true, it's false. So I, I ignore line number 19, 20, 21. I go to line number 22. Else, if 22 is less than 20, false. I ignore line 23, 24, 25. I go to line 26. Else, display whatever happens in line number 28. Okay, cool. Do I have a question? Do I have a question? Anyone with a question? Oh, come on. Anyone with a question? No one with a question. Nobody has a question here. Yes. Yes, ask a question. Then I, it, when you ask a question, I know how I need to teach and what I need to go through. Hmm? Say so on online number 26. Yes. What is about you? That you write, is it you that you write else? There? Yes. Now, that's a very good point. If I did not have line number 26, then the program would not be able to select something to do. Because you will notice in line number 17, I'm assigning the value of time. It takes on the value of 22. When it is 22, it's a, uh, and, and none of the conditions are true. So in line number 18, 22 is not less than 10, it's false. In line number 22, which is 22 is not less than 20. So it doesn't know what to do. That is why I've got to give the third option, which is see out good evening. Very good question. That means you're thinking, you know what I'm talking about. Let's go and run this program this time with uh, where I'm changing the value. I'm not putting 22 anymore. I'm okay. putting wait, wait, sir. Sir, Yes. Sir, I have a question here. Yes. Okay. So let's say uh, online. So let's say if time, the variable of time, if it was oh less than less than ten, yeah. If it, as it is eight. Yes. Uh, and online twenty two, you see. It is the, if the time is less than twenty. Good. Okay, so how does it know yes. that? How does it know that it, it shouldn't say good morning, because. Very good. Very good question. I like this. I like the way you think. Ah, so what I'm going to do is now I'm changing the variable of time to eight. So let's run the program and see what happens. This is how you learn programming. You must use the compiler as a tool to determine what will be the output given your inputs. So right now I'm running the program, compiling, compiling, compiling. So what happened is it went to line number 18 and it says eight is indeed less than 10. So now I must simply display good morning and that's the end of the story, all right? Because it made one selection and it displayed it, all right? It does not run to the else if because the first condition was met and the first condition is true. Does that answer your question? Hello? Oh, yes, it does. Thank you. Very good. Now, let me ask another question. What if the value of time was more than 10? So let's make it 12. 
That means line number 18 will not run. It's false. It's going to actually skip line number 19, 20, 21. Let's run the program and it will display the output from line number 22, 23, 24, 25. So it goes and looks at line number 18. It says 12 is not less than 10. That is false. Ignore, ignore, ignore line 20, 19, 20, 21. Let's look at line number 22. Else, is 12 less than 20? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 12 is less than 20, it's true. That means I must go inside line number 23, 24, 25. And I execute line number 24. See the words I'm using now, listen to them. I'm saying execute, run the program, compile the program. And after it finishes, finishes to execute the line number 24, it comes out, boom, end of story. Now let's go and try a, a situation where I do not have an option being selected from line number 18 or line number 22. So I want to make this 50. I don't know why I come up with 50, but let's just put up 50. So let's run the program. But before I run the program, as a programmer, you should be able to guess what happens. So you'll notice in line number 18, 50 is not less than 10. It's not going to display line number 20. It looks at line number 22. 50 is not less than 20. No. And the only alternative that it has to display is line number 28. Run the program. Compiling, compiling, compiling. Good evening. Yay, my guess was correct. So this is the basic structure of an if statement. When I started the lecture, I had a simple if statement without any else statements in there. Then I introduced you to an if else statement. And now I have an if else if else statement. All right. So you need to go through the notes, which is uh, on the top out here. I'm going to put that into the WhatsApp group. I would like you to read all of this. All right, I'd like you to read all of that. And, and I'm also going to put down the program that we just did. Right? I'm going to include the program that we just did. Right, so that, that'll help us, I'll help you. Right. Uh, now, where do I find the chat out here? Where's my chat? Okay. All right, there's all my participants. Oh, this doesn't show us like how MS Teams has, then I can take a photograph of all of you here. Huh? There's 31 participants in here. Now, did I lose my chat? Where's my chat, my Zoom chat? Um, I can't find my Zoom chat. Anybody can help me to find my chat? I don't know if any of you have written a message Ooh, someone is taking over my screen. Ah, I don't want you to share my screen. Right. Right. If they are, what are your questions? What questions do you have for me regarding if else if statement. Question, question, please. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Ah, there we go. There's the questions. Hello, sir. Oh, they didn't allow me to record. I answered that question. 
Sir, can you share the link to this new compiler for our practice? Of course, I can share the link to the new compiler. I also included that uh, Cebu CISO in our picture, the, snap, the screenshot that I have, it'll be in the address bar. All right, this is not a new compiler. I've been using this in the previous lectures, All right? Here's the compiler, I'm, I'm putting it into the, um, the compiler requested for from SIB USISO. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Sir, can you link the practice? All right, CBCSO, I put that down for you. And I'm also putting in the chat, right? There's the, there's the, in the chat, I put down the online. All right, so I'm going to stop out there because I want you to go through this lesson. Go through all these uh, under w3schools.com. Here's all the notes. There's no notes for you to take down. Basically, it's, you've got to read it. And I'd like you to go through the examples. I'd like you to run the examples. Then I'd also like you to go through the exercises. All right, submit the answers, click on start the exercise, and that will assist you to basically see your understanding of the if else statement. Okay, everybody. I'll put this down in the in our WhatsApp group. The exercises. Please do the following exercises. Okay. All right. Now I'm, I'm so, uh, just to some admin stuff. I'm so happy that all of you have submitted your scratch projects. And if you'd like, I'll just show you, I'll take one of the exercises, the scratch project. Let's go to the scratch project out here. CPLA, CPLA, you submitted it today at 11.13 a.m. So let me go and share CPLA's work. There's his project, let's have a look, Cameron. And I'll, I'll show you how scratch programming has similar features to what we are doing. Hey, what's happening with this? At C play, I think it's Cameron. Cameron, are you here with us? Let me have a look at my participants. Cameron, you're not here. And guess what, Cameron, your project is not loading or it's taking too long to load. Cameron, your project is not loading. The site can't be reached. Let's go to somebody else's project. T. Ram Sumar. You submitted it today. You're also a bit late. T. Ram Sumar. Uh, I could be. Ah, there we go. T. Ram Sumar. And it's project number 447488259. It says, simply read the information about climate change and climate control. Type in your yes, no answer to continue reading. Different answers will have different outcomes. However, all to the benefit of broadening your knowledge of climate change and control. All praise goes to my lecturer, Dr. Govender, for increasing my scratch programming understanding Allow me to put this piece of work together. Oh, thank you, Trishan Ramsumar. Yay, thank you very much. So now I need to go and click on the green flag. Wow, a bat, I wonder where it came from. I guess there is only one way to find out. 
Hello there, Miss Bat. It is quite surprising to see you out in the open after all the controversy speculating around you. <laughs> oh, you know me. I can survive through anything. I have time traveled. What is this climate change you speak of? Do you know what it is? Type yes or no. Ah, so Trishan is using the selection statement, which I'm talking about in C++. So I'm going to say no. All right, I'm going to say <laughs> no. It's time for you to learn. Trishan R. First, tell me your name. My name is Pranavan. P-R-I-N-A-V-I-N. Let me take you on a journey of learning about climate change, Pranavan. Sounds perfect. Climate change describes a con change in condition, such as temperature. Mm. Will you allow me to show you what I mean? Yes or no? So I'm going to say yes. Oh, look at that. This is cool, Trishan. What am I looking at again, Mr. Bat? Global warming is causing seawater to expand and ice over land is starting to melt. Both together. Mm. Are you paying attention? No. <laughs> ah, this is so cool, Trishan. I suggest you start this tutorial all over again. Aha. I think this is pretty cool, Trishan. I'm so happy. Let me go inside his program code and see what it says. When the green flag is clicked, this is what I need to do. Oh, look at this. This is pretty cool. Say hello when I receive this. Ah, this is lovely. I think I'm going to share this to my um, Facebook page, Trishan. So I'm going to say copy the link. Copy the link and I am going to go to my Facebook page and I am going to display that for everybody to see what Trishan has taught us about climate change. And I'm going to tag Kuhn Timmers, one of my friends on Facebook because he talks about climate change all the time. Ah oh, man, come on, what's up with this? All righty. Right, so let me see if my Facebook page is opening up for me. My my internet is a bit slow today. I wonder why. I wonder why. All right, doesn't really matter, but I'm so happy with Trishan's work. I'm going to do a snapshot. As, 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 as I'm going to post this in. Edit, copy, and I'm going to say, well done, T-R-I-S-H-E-N, Trishan. I remember him because I created his scratch login details. T Ramsumar. I think his password was Ramsumar something, something, something number. But I won't say it out loud because I don't want everybody to hear that. All righty. So let's, let's see if there's any questions here. Any other question for me? No questions. Whoa, 31 participants. This is cool. Now, if only I could put our uh, video on and then we can take a snapshot of everybody, huh? Let's put my video on. Yay, right. Will the rest of you put your video on, please? Then I will take a photograph. 
Yeah, I'm a Marshley. Yay. Hello. Ah, oh, put you put it on. Kulekani. Come on. Yay. Sianda. Sianda. Caesar. Let me make, let me go outside because I'm getting some background light over here. Let me take a photograph. One D and do doozo. All right, let me go and stand outside. I had to go inside the car because it was a little noisy out there. Right. Ah, there we go. That's a nice clear picture. Let me see if I can take a photograph. Ah, uh, let's see. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh boy, that's our line. Close on the line there. Wow. It's in the garage. Lovely. Yay. Yeah. Good boy. Good, good, everyone. Right. Thank you, everybody. I'll end the lecture now, okay? Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. So please go and do your recording. Yes, I'm going to post the recording. I promise I'll post the recording. All right, I promise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. 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 Oh, we're done. <laughs> Bye, sir. Okay, hello Tando, okay. <laughs>